Why were pendulums used in clocks? Well, here's why. Let's mark every time the pendulum hits the bottom of the swing right here. Okay, watch. All right, now here's the question. How fast will the beeps be if I swing it from much higher up? Let's find out. No matter how high the pendulum swings, it keeps the same frequency. That's why they were used in clocks, because it could swing for a long while, and even though it would lose energy, it would still keep perfect time. The frequency of a pendulum doesn't change, no matter how high it swings or how much weight is on the bottom. The frequency comes from how long the line is. Now this is a pendulum wave. Because each bowling ball has a line that's a different length, they have a slightly different frequency. They start out swinging together, but soon they start to make interesting patterns. Remember, each pendulum is keeping its own perfect time, even if it's slowing down. It's only the length of the line that gives each pendulum a different frequency. And now, we're gonna max it out with, with, um, well, I guess these are already bowling balls, so this is already pretty maxed out. I'm just gonna, just gonna leave that there. These are balloons. This is a laser, and these are awesome laser safety glasses. Now, lasers are made of light, and light has a frequency. In fact, each color of light has a different frequency. This is a red laser. Check it out. Yeah, cool. This is also a very powerful laser. Oh, I can pop the blue balloon with the red laser because the blue absorbed the red light from the laser and then it heated up and the balloon popped. But here's the cool thing. I cannot pop a red balloon with a red laser because the red balloon reflects the red light from the red laser and I can't pop it. If I wanted to pop a balloon with a red laser, I need to use a darker balloon, one that absorbs the red light, like <laughs> like a black balloon. <laughs> so there you go. Lasers, frequencies of light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this red balloon because it's always nice to have a balloon. <laughs> Chris and I are maxing out the Vibrobot, but our last version shook itself apart. Now the plan is to start with something more solid and try again. We found some very solid steps and added an even bigger motor, an even bigger battery, and attached a half circle wheel to make the vibrations when the motor spins. We add some paintbrushes and fire it up. Here we go. Come on. Go, Vibrobot. Wants to move. Is it moving at all? Hmm. Hmm. So it's still not working. It's already getting caught in the paper and it's on the paintbrushes. And the, yeah, the paintbrushes seem to be absorbing too much vibration and then the paper's stopping as well. So why don't we remove the paintbrushes? Yeah. And we might as well remove the paper if we don't have any more paintbrushes. Yes. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. No paintbrushes, no paper. Okay. Now let's try it. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Aha! It's moving. Not bad. The shaking is good, but I don't know if the shaking is enough. So, what do we do? Well, we could add another battery. Another battery which would give it more power? That's right. Okay, let's try that. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't working before. No. Not enough power. And now we've got a second battery here. That's right. We've wired them up so that one power feeds into the other, so we've got twice as much juice as we did. So it's just a matter of clipping this onto there. That's right. But hold on. Yeah, safety glasses, because now we don't know what's going to happen anymore. Ready? Three, two, one. The extra battery makes a big difference. The new Vibrobot shakes around and only shakes itself apart a little. All right, Whoa. that was amazing. <laughs> okay, so all we needed was more power. That's right, I think it didn't have enough power to, to vibrate up and down and that's why it wasn't moving every time it hit the ground. So I think if we're gonna use this much power, I think we need to build it again. Okay. Build it even stronger and with a bigger motor. Yeah. And more power. And then maybe I ride it. Do you think we can build that? Of course. Of course. Okay, let's do it. Oh, Anthony! 
Phil. So I was wondering if you could help me with an experiment. I want to generate as much electricity with human power. What do you think? I think that sounds awesome. Okay, great. Let's go back to Science Max headquarters. Is that the portal? Yeah. Don't worry, all the kinks are worked out. what it is, it's this. Uh, where did you end up? I was in the vents. Oh, I ended up in the bathroom. All right, well, now that we're here. Okay, so this is what I started with, and this is uh, just, you know, an electric motor, right? Right, right. Um, so you can generate electricity, you spin it, so I figured in order to generate more electricity, you get a bigger generator? Exactly, yeah, the bigger the generator, the bigger the magnet, the more the copper, the more the electricity. Oh, uh, well, you know what we should do is we should just get an even bigger one, like a giant one that they use in like at a power plant or something, or? Mm, not quite, that would be too big for a person to be able to turn, it'd just oh. be impossible. So you think this is a good size? I think this is a great size. Okay, so that's that's good. This is called a multimeter. We're gonna hook up the wires, I will do black to uh, black. Black to black. And red. And as you turn our generator, we can see just how much electricity we're, we're generating. Okay, so. Here, you hold on to that. This, and, and I'll can turn start the turning. generator. Now it's time to play How Much Electricity Did They Make? 2.4 volts, yeah, it's not bad. Oh, 2.4, yeah, it's not great. That's just enough to power a small LED flashlight. Better keep trying, boys. I got some handles here that we're going to attach ah, to the end of the generator so yeah. we can spin it. Okay, let's try. Huh? No matter how fast I crank the large handle, I couldn't make any more electricity than before. Okay, let's uh, try something else. I get, I, but it's a smaller handle. Perfect, okay, that's, yeah. That's good? Yeah, well, maybe it'll let us get more spins in. Oh right? yeah, because I don't have to make as big a circle. Exactly. Yeah, it's working already. We're up to like 3.5. Now, how much electricity is Phil making? 4.5. That's the same as three AA batteries. Maybe enough to power a toy car. Still a long way to go. Yeah, it's, it's a lot higher with the faster spins. Oh, all right, all right, you, you okay? I'm okay. Maybe we could use like some gears or something like that. Oh yeah, you know, that's a good idea because the, the this circle that I'm making here, I can only go so fast. So yeah. maybe with gears you can do one circle here equals like 10 circles on the other gear. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, um, so kind of like the like the gears on on like a on like a bike. Yeah, the gears on a bike or something like that. A bike! Oh, of course! Oh. Yeah, so okay, so we get a bike and we attach the back tire to the generator. The generator, and then you can use the pedals of the big gear to power the small gears. Okay, great. Right. We'll go get a bike. Yeah. Yeah, high five. Uh, All, right. All right. Oh, right, they're over here. So Anne and I have made a large shaker table. Now it's just a matter of designing a building. We use lumber and cut it up, use screws to attach it all together, put a platform on top for a weight, and attach it securely to our shaker table. The building is super simple. Just four corners and a few planks around the outside. No structure in the middle. And finally, the big heavy weight on the top. There. We attach a pole to the shaker table so we can shake from a safe distance and try it out. Okay, very slow. Forward. Let's see how much shaking it can stand with our shakeometer. Okay. Uh, that seems to be okay. Kidding. Oh, oh no. Whoa. We barely start to shake our tower before it collapses. Oh, that didn't really last very long, did it? It completely folded up on itself. Uh, what do we do to fix this, make it better? I think the easiest thing we can do is to use thicker wood. It'll make it less wobbly. Okay, sure, let's make another one. Bye, fives. We do have lots of wood, that's a good thing. Ann and I are trying small improvements every time. There. Our last building used thinner pieces of wood. Now we're using thicker wood, which we think will help keep the weight at the top from collapsing the building. Everything else about the design of our building is the same. We put the weight on top and fix our pole and we're good to go. All right, you ready? Problem. Okay. Starting to creak. But it recovers. You can yeah. see it lean and then it comes back and it, re and it resets. Definitely doing better than the last one. Oh no. I'm impressed. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> it definitely did better than the first one. It did better than the first one. And the thicker wood definitely helped. But it was really starting to turn. I think on the next one, we need some platforms in the center to help strengthen it even more. 
Earthquake Building 3.0. Thicker wood this time, but with platforms in the middle. So we're gonna see how well this version works with these middle parts that'll hopefully reinforce. And they're just like the floors of a building. Okay, well let's find out if it's gonna make any difference. Starting to wobble a little, but it looks pretty good. As soon as we start shaking, it's really obvious this building is more solid. Uh-oh, it's starting to creak. Oh, it's really starting to creak. The platforms in the middle really seem to improve the structure. You can see it bend all the way over and still recover. But still, it wasn't long before... Really starting to lean. <laughs> wow, the extra pieces really kind of made it more impressive. It definitely lasted a lot longer than the other two. It did, but here's what I'm wondering. Are we going in the wrong direction? What do you mean? Well, because if it's really solid, it resists the change. Okay, I see where you're going with this. So if we make it flexible, it can resist the shaking of an earthquake. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, okay, let's do it. 